Here we have a Dell Latitude E6530. We're going to open it up and explore the insides. Just going to show you it's a 6530. We're going to flip to the back. <coughs> Please note the back has five screws, which I'll point out, and that I have already re removed in advance. So here we go. There's a DVD drive. Push this button and pull the DVD drive out. You might not be able to pull the DVD drive out if you have a screw ready in place. Remember to remove the battery. You don't actually have to remove the battery as there's no screws underneath, but for this case we'll remove it. Here's the hard drive. There's two screws holding the hard drive down and then you slot the hard drive that way. Just pull it out. So here's the hard drive. It's a two inch, two and a half inch hard drive. There's only one hard drive, two and a half inch hard drive bay. So now we have to remove three screws, which I'm pointing to it now. After you remove those three screws, just shove your fingers underneath it, or use a prying tool, and lift it off the back. Please note it comes off one way only, as you have to lift it up from the battery side. And when you put it in, you have to put it in from the front side. Here's the wireless card, here's the graphic card, CPU, fan, here's the RAM, stick 1, stick 2. There's other wireless card slots, there's actually three of them, one's occupied. So to remove the RAM, push, it, push the two sides apart, the RAM pops up, take it apart, take it up, sorry, remove it. Let's do the same thing with the second one. There's only two RAM slots, meaning 8 gigs in each slot, 16 gigs max. So here's the BIOS battery. So with the wireless card, we need to remove the antenna to remove it. There's one screw holding the wireless card down. Remove that screw, and it will pop up like the RAM at 45 degree angle. So just push it out, and it comes off. Just to show you, it fits in the other slot as well. This is a small slot, so there's basically two of those. And there's a bigger slot. You can put an M starter SSD here if you want to, as it fits one. I'm just going to put the wireless card back, as I don't need to remove it. So now we're going to remove the CPU and graphic card heatsink. So to do that, there's three screws on the graphic card, and there's four screws on the CPU heatsink that we have to remove. You can remove these in any order you want, but when you put it back in on the heatsink, there's actually numbers, which I'll show you later. You need to screw the screws back in order, so that's why it spreads out the thermal paste evenly. Also, when you remove the heatsink, you need to clean off the old thermal paste and replace it with new thermal paste. I'm using Noctua NT H1. Don't be cheap on your thermal paste, it's really important and it costs $10 Australian per tube. And one tube lasts basically 10 laptops or 15 laptops depending on how big the CPUs are. So now that we remove all the screws, you have to remove the fan plug. I'm going to remove this screw here, you don't have to, this is a mistake, this is to remove the keyboard, you need to remove this screw, there's three keyboard screws on the laptop, you need to remove those three screws if you want to remove the keyboard. So now that we removed all the screws, I'm just going to show you the numbers on the heating. So here there's number one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. So now that we remove all the screws, we're just going to lift the heatsink up and it should pop off. You need to tilt it and then drag it out. So here we go. We need to clean off the thermal paste. You don't need any special liquids or solution. Just use the tissue and it comes off.
So I removed it off screen so I can clean it off easier. Now I'm going to remove the fan. Behind the fan is where, when you remove it, normally where the dust builds up. You need to remove four screws holding the fan down. When you see me remove the fan, you will see that I don't have much dust. Normally, if you have dust, it will build up here. That's the point of you removing this, the fan. So here we go. There's this sticky tape that holds the. It's to cover the heating and the uh, fan gap. Don't need to remove it, but dust normally fills up here. If you have any dust blockages, it's there. For my case, I don't. So I'm just going to screw back the fan as I don't need it. So we're going to have to clean this firm place off the CPU and graphic card as well. Please note the graphic card is not replaceable, but the CPU is, and in this video you will see me replacing the CPU firmware place. So here, with normal tissue, you can clean it. To show you now, it's all clean. I'm going to get tissue as well to clean off the CPU and graphic card. Normally it comes off pretty easily. Try to clean it as best as you can. You don't have to go all out making sure that it's 100% clean. The top part is the most important part. The sides aren't so important. But if you can remove it, it will be a good thing. Please don't be careful when you're removing it and lifting up your tissue as you might get some thermal paste dropping down back on your motherboard. Normally I would not use tissue, as tissue breaks down, I normally use a towel or some hard tissue. So I'm going to get my screwdriver, I'm going to remove the CPU, like I said. In this one, in this laptop, I have an i5. I'm going to change it with an i7. So here, here's my i7 CPU. There's a screw here. You have to turn it anti-clockwise, halfway, and it comes off. So now, with my new CPU. I'm going to put it in. There's a triangle on the corner here. It shows you which direction the CPU needs to go in. There's also a triangle on the board. It's a bit hard to see. If you have one in front of you, you'll be able to tell. So you just put the CPU in and screw the screw clockwise. Half a circle and it locks it in. Now we're going to get our thermal paste. Like I told you before, I'm using Noctor NTH1. This costs around $10 per tube. Thermal paste is really important. So the idea is just to put half a rice grain in the center of each chip. Don't spread it out. This is the point of the heatsink and numbers. When you put the heatsink on, and screw the screw according to the numbers, it will spread out the thermal paste evenly. So I'm going to show you the numbers again. If you can't see the numbers, you can just follow the way that I screw it back in, which is basically following the numbers. The idea is you don't have to follow the numbers, it's better off if you do. 
it's actually the purpose of the numbers is to screw it back in a crisscross way. That way the thermal paste gets spread out evenly. Unscrewing all the screws in, remember to plug in your fan or else you're going to have issues. Now that we finish, we're going to plug in the fan. Please note, after this part is the reassembly. As some people have complained and they don't know how to reassemble their laptop. So I have filmed the reassembly of it too. You can just end your, your viewing here if you wish or you can watch the reassembly if you need to and that's it thanks for watching my video also with the RAM like I said before this laptop only has two slots so it means 16 gigs max 8 gigs in each stick and it's DDR3 or DDR3L